So the title on this presentation is Chemical and Nuclear Catalysis Mediated by the Energy Localization in Crystals and Quasicrystals. Uh, the <clears throat> Mike uh, Kothos in this work, uh, pr presented by the theorist uh, Denis Laptev and Clearing, who actually <clears throat> behind the funding of this study and uh, also the author of uh, the <clears throat> quasi-crystalline ideas uh, presented in this talk. The outline is as follows. Uh, we consider the localized and harmonic vibrations uh, the state of the art and their role in chemical and nuclear catalysis. And finally, we will show some uh, <clears throat> molecular dynamic simulations of this phenomena in uh, different uh, systems uh, ranging from crystals to quasi-crystalline clusters. Well, uh, mostly all of you probably know about the so-called FPU paradox. Uh, and it started in the summer <clears throat> 1953, when Fermi, Pasta, and Ulam, with the help of a programmer, uh, Tsingo, actually considered the chain of uh, <coughs> coupled and unharmonic oscillators. And uh, um, Fermi thought that after many iterations, the system would exhibit thermalization. But it didn't. Actually, it, it behaved uh, very unusually. And um, mm, and the system uh, uh, <clears throat> showed very complicated, quasi-periodic behavior. So energy uh, concentrated at one point in time, then dissipated, and then concentrated again. And this was the first, probably, uh, <clears throat> indication of that complexity of nonlinear system behavior, which, uh, which, which gave rise to a number of folks trying to understand what's going on in this system. And uh, I, <clears throat> to my mind, uh, the second very uh, important contribution to this topic was done by uh, Russian physicist Avchinikov. Already in the early 70s, a lot of papers was written by him. And uh, in the seminal one, he considered just two coupled unharmonic oscillators. Two. Uh, uh, this is um, <clears throat> a nonlinear term, this is a coupling. And uh, this is a phase portrait diagram of uh, their behavior. And this is the time needed for thermalization. If you give, if you displace one uh, oscillator from the equilibrium position, you would expect that sooner or later he will give share its energy with another one. But it appears that the, if the amplitude of this initial amplitude is, is larger than the critical one, it will never occur. So we have this <clears throat> uh, clear indication of thermal of local energy, energy localization. Uh, later on, people were trying to obtain uh, even um, exact solutions uh, for the change of uh, unharmonic oscillators. And here, they, they were called discrete breezers. Discrete because it's discrete lattice, breezer because it's as if breathing. Yeah? This is a 1D <coughs> illustration of standing and uh, <clears throat> moving one. If you consider just a simple uh, one-dimensional <clears throat> network or a chain of this oscillator, you will see that uh, we can uh, generate here either standing uh, weakly localized or strongly localized, depending on the parameter breather, or <coughs> we can push it and it, it starts running uh <clears throat> at the sub-sound uh, velocity. Uh, in the real crystals, uh, the physics, underlying physics is more or less uh, clear now. We know that uh, due to non-linearity, non the uh, frequency of the vibration increases or decreases. And if it goes beyond uh, the above or below or in the gap in the phonon spectrum, then the coupling between this localized vibration and the whole crystal becomes weak, and we can expect uh, <coughs> formation of these uh, <coughs> of these localized and harmonic vibrations. Uh, not so long ago, in 2011, uh, academician Hishnikov predicted the formation of 
discrete bruisers in metals. Before that, uh, people didn't know that this was possible because of the <coughs> uh, soft type of unharmonicity. Un 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 but it appears that along some special directions due to uh, <coughs> electronic uh, Friedel electronic uh, oscillations, there is sharpening, and uh, we now can, uh, <coughs> it's been proved, and we, we now can easily uh, to generate, for instance, uh, discrete breezers in uh, uh, metals. Here is our own simulation uh, some years ago in the alpha uh, BCC <coughs> iron, yeah? And uh, it's a 3D. Uh, also, the uh, direction is 1D, but the crystal is a 3D, and uh, this uh, <clears throat> many body potentials, uh, usual potentials are involved. And if you push, you can actually push uh, this breather, and it starts running. And when he uh, jumps at the vacancy, he behaves like a real, like a quasi particle. Well, and finally. Uh, the result of this year, we, we played with the um, palladium <coughs> clusters of different sizes and, and uh, we have some magic numbers, as you know, uh, which uh, magic numbers uh, makes the symmetric uh, structure, like, the, like here. Yeah? Uh, for instance, f for 55 palladium atoms are organized in, in the structure like that. And if you just displace the atoms uh, one or two in a close pack direction, uh, again, instead of just sharing uh, um, in a chaotic motion, it starts really breathing, yeah? Uh, well, well to, to my mind, it's the first um, picture of the first <coughs> simulation of a real 3D breather. <laughs> Let's say, you see, this guy is breathing like that. Of course, <coughs> uh, we are interested in a more complicated system, for instance, like uh, PDH or PDD uh, lattice. The, here is this. Uh, visualization at 0k, neglecting, neglecting the quantum fluctuations, we, we see something like this. Uh, mm, but what, what, when you hit the system? When we hit the system, for instance, uh, 100k, uh, and already we see that uh, everybody start moving, yeah? If you hit more, 1000k and everybody moving like hell so the question is how how to how to see uh, uh, emergence of some organized um, behavior in this in this case uh, luckily it is possible and as was demonstrated some time ago in Dmitriev's group um, who considered deliberately this NSL uh, <coughs> structures uh, and due to the difference of masses, uh, we have the phonon gap. Phonon gap is increases with uh, increasing the mass ratio. Yeah, and for instance, we have phonon gap in uh, <coughs> palladium uh, hydrogen of palladium deuterium uh, <coughs> crystals. Uh, this is experimental results. And then they showed uh, statistically when you heat. When you heat these uh, crystals in the simulation experiment, for instance, up to 1,000K, then there, there is emergence of, uh, of, uh, localized, of, of localized vibrations having the energy five times more. Uh, as if as if they have a temperature of 5,000 K. Uh, also, the um, notion of temperature is not very applicable in this case be, be because it's an endoscopic uh, thing. And it, it is persistent uh, up to dozens, uh, in this case, of 70 uh, periods. Yeah? Uh, and uh, f f f here is just an example when the mass difference is, uh, coincides with the palladium <coughs> deuterium, which is 50. One could expect a la large, <coughs> large gap and uh, quasi-periodic behavior of oscillation of these uh, atoms. So what? Uh, uh, here, let's try. Uh, there's some cartoon. Ah, it doesn't go. Uh, but uh, what I wanted to do uh, <coughs> to illustrate what, what happens, uh, how the breather uh, or LAV um, affects the potential lake landscape. Usually, the chemical reaction is, is considered like a escape rate from one 
a stable position to another, yeah? And uh, the work is done by fluctuations. Uh, so this is like browning motion. But uh, this nanoscopic uh, <clears throat> phenomena like Vrizer, it, it acts on the potential landscape itself. And it, it, it starts oscillating also in a quasi-periodic manner. Yeah? And uh, this, uh, this uh, evidently uh, results in acceleration of the escape rate. And it can be calculated, as we did in the, uh, six years ago and published in FISREF, uh, the amplification factor to the usual Kramers rate, which is the Arrhenius uh, formula. Yeah? We have this uh, <coughs> Bessel function of uh, the ratio between the um, amplitude of um, driving and KT, yeah? And, and you see that, for instance, uh, for driving ampl amplitude of within the a AV ratio, one can uh, already have uh, many, many orders of magnitude of uh, amplification of the uh, <clears throat> reaction rate. And uh, there is no theory of, uh, general theory of catalysis, as you know. But one phenological fact is uh, that uh, catalyst uh, seems to r somehow reduce the activation energy. So breather or LAV does exactly that, uh, as we showed here. It, it effectively reduces uh, the, <clears throat> the activation energy. Uh, it mostly belongs to the chemical realm uh, and to high temperatures. Uh, so our question is how to extend this concept to the quantum effect, tunneling, etc. Uh, there's a very um, helpful uh, no number of papers from Brazilian group. They modified the Kramer's theory, including uh, they are the um, zero point oscillations. It simply reflects the fact that here in the denom denominator we have not only the temperature but the combination of this um, uh, quantum noise and the thermal noise. So at high temperatures, we, of course, the, the quantum noise becomes weak, and we came to the Kramer's equation. But when the temperature grows, uh, go, goes to zero, no thermal uh, fluctuations, but the quantum still remains, yeah? And in this case, we have something like this. So, uh, when we heat the system, we increase temperature, which means that we increase the thermal noise strength, okay? Now the question is, can we increase the quantum noise strength? That is the zero point oscillation energy. Uh, if you look at the uh, oscillator uh, energy spectrum, this is a wave function, this is a <coughs> probability uh, for the particle to be found uh, in, uh, at some place. Yeah? Uh, seemingly, there is nothing uh, to be affected, you know, because the energy spectrum is given by this formula. Uh, this is a <coughs> zero point energy, it's just Planck constant and the cell frequency, nothing more. But uh, again, consider the double well, which is uh, fluctuating like this due to due to LAV. Yeah, LAV just like this, uh, quasi periodic. Uh, <clears throat> driving of the potential well. Then you will see that uh, the bottom on the well, which can be represented like, like, like parabola, uh, um, does two things. First, it like breezes, its cell frequency changes, and its position changes. And it's possible to consider these uh, two problems <coughs> analytically. Uh, separately and analytically. First of all, it is known that uh, when your problem, quantum problem, uh, is time dependent, the energy itself is very difficult to um, define. But uh, in time periodic problems, you can operate with the quasi energy. And uh, in this uh, case of uh, p uh, periodically driving oscillator, uh, it is known that. Uh, the uh, energy spectrum is uh, modified like that. Again, n pl plus uh, uh, one half, but here is not just h omega by, but some, some function, some function of the driving. And uh, this result is, is good for non-resonant uh, regions, yeah? when the, you can achieve some uh, stationary state. But what if the... Um, <clears throat> Uh, the uh, frequency of your uh, driving uh, matches some resonant frequency, either cell frequency or double cell frequency. Double cell frequency means uh, the parametric resonance. Uh, 
um, some time ago in my previous talks uh, and in, in the papers, yes, we have demonstrated that exactly for the palladium <coughs> deuterium lattice, uh, you can achieve uh, these parametric resonance conditions when the uh, <coughs> breather frequency doubles the frequency of adjacent uh, <coughs> harmonic oscillators. Then the problem can be solved analytically and we obtain this uh, elegant result actually. Uh, the left figure, the left picture shows you what has been predicted by Wysotsky, Vladimir Wysotsky, who unfortunately is not present, but uh, I spoke to him before I live in Kiev and he sends his <coughs> warmest regards to the conference. Yeah? And uh, he, was, he first uh, <coughs> attracted the, our attention to the fact that uh, wave function or probability uh, of distribution and of particle uh, becomes broader and broader with increasing of cycles of uh, of <coughs> of driving. Yeah. Uh, what he didn't notice, uh, and we did, that um, not only the amplitude of this uh, zero point oscillation increases, also energy increases. Uh, of these oscillations. Uh, that's why, of course, the uh, correlation factor, which uh, can be evaluated in this case, also increases and goes to, to, to uh, tries to, to get to unity, as Wysotsky uh, predicted. But it, it, it will never probably get to unity because the, of the energy constraint, because energy increases quite, quite, quite um, fast in this uh, particular case, like exp actually exponent is a cosine. <coughs> hyperbolic. And uh, uh, what is interesting that when you consider all the harmonic, not only the basic state, but the first and second, it appears that the, the result is holds. So again, we have uh, um, some coefficient. So in the in a uh, resonant area, also the equidistance, I will show it like this, uh, the, uh, the distance between the different levels became the same. But all the distances, all the distances grow uh, uh, exponentially with time. It looks as if, if you combine this h omega with this cosine, it looks as if your Planck constant bec becomes uh, dependent o o on time. You know, grows very, very fastly. Yeah, of course, it's just a, a mathematical analogy, but it may be helpful. Because if we increase even mathematically, yeah, something uh, that looks like a Planck constant, it means that we in, in increase the the um, <coughs> uncertainty. Uh, also, if we um, try to to move the oscillator like that, uh, is center of uh, mass, uh, we, we will see that. Uh, its packet w w w would be like like that, and also it, it en its energy will increase. Mm, I will skip that because uh, this is a just a calculations, uh, just a simple formula for the correlation factor, and we will we will we see here that uh, according to the Wysotsky theory, it goes to the unity. But as I said, <coughs> it will never reach unity because energy also increases. Uh, but what is interesting, when we uh, really uh, try numerical calculation of um, escape of, of a particle from one well to another, like here, here is the uh, st stationary case. Uh, and then the expectation is something like 10 to 5 of cycles. And here I, I have shown you 10 cycles, 5 cycles, self cycles. <coughs> self, uh, it's the periods, self periods, yeah? Here is the 100 cycles, and, and we see that this particle is uh, just sitting in one well. Only at uh, <coughs> above the 10 to 4, uh, near to 10 to 5, we will see the spreading to another one. But as soon as we start you know, driving like that, we cannot solve this problem uh, analytically. But even the MAPLE problem can solve the Schrodinger equation uh, numerically, and we see that already 10 cycles results like this compared with that. Uh, 50 cycles and 100 cycles and you see that the, even at a glance the, the probability uh, <coughs> of the distribution between the wells becomes more or less equal. It 
it, it shows that it's really possible <coughs> to accelerate uh, the, uh, the tunneling uh, by, by this driving. And in this particular case, the energy of zero point uh, vibrations uh, is 10 times less than the uh, barrier height. And of course, uh, it's not the case when we deal with this extreme case low energy nuclear reactions when uh, people uh, b still believe that the barrier is uh, uh, barrier height and it is uh, 450 kV. Yeah, uh, but this is estimate very simple. is uh, simply done when you we just uh, have this cologne and uh, insert here the nuclear radius. Okay, and then of course the barrier is giant and the <coughs> the Tunneling, <coughs> tunneling probability is practically zero. There, there, there was two guys, <coughs> uh, very prominent, both Nobel Prizes, who in 19 <coughs> tried to analyze the problem. Uh, well, Lem, with Parvinter and Schwinger, uh, Lem actually uh, and Parvinter, they uh, composed the, the model of Fermi Thomas model of uh, the electrons and actually the, the, the idea was to take in, into account electron screening and now we, we know more uh, much more about electron screening due to experiments done by Kasagi and by many others uh, that show that yes there is electron screening but no it's not uh, it's not sufficient to understand what we observe yes yeah uh, Schwinger went another way uh, and uh, he considered uh, in detail lattice screening what can be told exactly what, what he, did he do uh, he said it, it's it's not good just to to say that this uh, datron for instance a proton sitting here or here it's sitting everywhere with some probability so we we have to take an integral over the harmonic region and when you take this integral you obtain this form simple formula which has two limits yeah of course at large distances we have usual colon uh, <coughs> repulsion but the closer you are and instead of going you know to mev region uh, the, there's a situation at about 100 ev uh, yeah <coughs> uh, and um, <coughs> then um, Schwinger estimated the uh, the fusion rate, uh, which he de defined like an inverse time of the phonon vacuum. Uh, in his idea, the energy produced uh, in the fusion would be given to the lattice, uh, uh, even if there was a phonon vacuum before, then would be no. And uh, so he, the, his, his formula, and here is his calculations, uh, which show uh, with these parameters that the fusion rate, his estimation, was 10 to min minus 90. Uh, in this case, he considered uh, two detrons sitting in one, in one side, inside one side of palladium lattice. If you consider uh, sitting to, uh, into adjacent sides, you know, the, di the distance is greater and here we have a huge dependence on the distance so this is a double exponent yeah of the distance be between the lattice sites and this very uh, important parameter the amplitude of zero point uh, <coughs> vibrations yeah so if you go from here to here uh, then 10 <coughs> 10 orders of magnitude difference and <coughs> it's a little bit lower than could be expected but here goes the play with uh, unharmonic fluctuations, uh, un unharmonic uh, vibrations. Sorry. Uh, if we assume, if we assume that uh, <coughs> we can now increase by this driving, yeah, the this amplitude, then uh, and then we look at the potential landscape. Yeah, the red one is the harmonic region harmonic region due to the Thomas Fermi uh, model and due to the electron screening and of course uh, its region depends on the screening length and for instance for, for these calculations I took the screening length from uh, the experiments uh, <coughs> uh, present uh, experiments uh, recent experiments with Kasagi uh, <coughs> etc yeah uh, in this case we have surprisingly large harmonic region yeah and uh, then then uh, we see that uh, with increasing number of um, <coughs> of driving cycles 
we can go from uh, 100 or so EV just to the region of uh, chemical energies, to a few EV. Uh, uh, that's kind of interesting. And uh, also we can then calculate uh, the fusion rate. And it appears that um, if you start from uh, Sh uh, Schwinger minus uh, <coughs> 10 to minus, uh, here is 10 to minus 90, yeah, quite quickly in just uh, 10 or 15 cycles, we, we go to the 10 to minus 5, <coughs> etc. And uh, what is more, uh, we can use this, uh, <coughs> this equation, insert there uh, this into the, uh, into the equation for the breather or LAV formation, uh, <coughs> which is uh, driving both by temperature and both by irradiation. If it's, for instance, um, this particular plot is received uh, is uh, constructed uh, to analyze the <coughs> electrolysis experiment yeah this is a dependence on the current density and this is output energy and uh, uh, for instance when uh, today morning uh, there was a discussion about the theory producing some equations here this model whether it's correct or not is able to produce just an uh, just a very simple equations the only parameters entering are I hear, you know, like this is uh, breather energy or oscillation frequency, <coughs> of course the time uh, of, of this <coughs> driving, all mm, these parameters more or less reasonable because they are taken from M MD simulations and combining them it is possible to uh, uh, at least understand why, why the excess energy depends on the current density in the electrolysis experiment, yeah, because the current density uh, it makes these bumps, 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 uh, <coughs> knocks, uh, <coughs> pr producing, um, <coughs> producing breezers, uh, and that's why when we switch off the system, uh, it goes to <coughs> more or less zero. Uh, well, another question when we discussed, which we discussed, yes, uh, was was uh, where, uh, how the model can, or a model, any model can help experimentalists. Uh, in other words, where to look for this nuclear active environment uh, from the point of view of this model. Uh, we believe that small energy gap is required for the formation of LAV. Usually, usually there is some gap. Yeah? You have to <coughs> excite something. That's why we need, usually we, we need at least heating. For instance, like in the rossi Parkonga experiments, if they are, if they are <coughs> real, uh, then it's understandable why, why we need the higher temperature, because the higher temperature, the more thermal fluctuations, and thermal fluctuations could produce uh, LIVs. Uh, there's another consideration. Uh, <coughs> some years ago, uh, <coughs> uh, Professor Piazza from France attracted the attention to the fact that when you analyze the amorphous uh, <coughs> structure, like a protein one, and just heat it in the in computer, of course, then you see that the uh, LAV always um, always um, arise at the same places, and these places are topologically selected with the number of connections, etc. So there are some uh, <coughs> some local things uh, that are uh, that are characteristic of the system, uh, and uh, <coughs> uh, so the role of disorder appears to be more understandable. Yeah, disorder in some in some cases <coughs> are better than order because it designates some places where the gap of to to, to for energy localization is lower. And uh, uh, also we know, for instance, such experiments, uh, MD experiments for nickel nanoparticles, they are heated to again 1,000 K. Uh, this is a mean temperature, but the color in these pictures represent to the local, not actually temperature, what they call the bivolar factor, which is the mean uh, oscillation distance. Yeah? And you see that along, the, uh, along some <coughs> grains, um, we, we see the big red ones. It means that it's somewhere there emergence of uh, long living up to 130 picosecond 
uh, states that uh, uh, with the energy in the AV, AV range, yeah? <coughs> which is 10 times more than the average temperature. Uh, another example, interesting, is uh, quasicrystals. Quasicrystals uh, actually give us the first, probably the first indication, experimental indication, it's in the title of this paper, direct observation of local thermal vibration anomaly in quasicrystal quasi of this type, aluminum nickel cobalt. Yeah, <clears throat> and uh, if you look uh, at this picture, you will see uh, like the spots, and the size of the spots actually give you the idea of this debiable fracture, and it, it's been analyzed in this paper, <clears throat> which is um, which was followed a number of other papers and in, in Nature, so it's a well well de defined result, and uh, it, it shows that with increasing temperature the Debye-Waller fracture also increases and uh, at some point uh, this um, localized vibration uh, can give rise to another phenomenon which is called phasons. Phasons, uh, it's uh, like a phase transition um, <clears throat> uh, which can be roughly described by large jumps of a group atoms from one position to another position. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, here is also uh, our attempts to model uh, some uh, small clusters of palladium impregnated with deuterium. Uh, and uh, here again, these magic clusters, uh, the simple formulas how to construct them uh, and uh, <clears throat> uh, how to excite the uh, 3D breather, uh, the picture that I have already shown to you. And uh, uh, also, this one will show you that uh, while you can excite it if you give too much energy that eventually it is destroyed. Well, uh, <coughs> that about also the conclusions and outlook are as follows. <coughs> well, uh, we believe that uh, we present some new mechanism of both chemical and nuclear catalysis, uh, which is based on time periodic driving of the potential landscape induced by emerging nonlinear phenomena such as LAVs, phase zones, and maybe others. Uh, well, what is important that the present mechanism, uh, <clears throat> it doesn't uh, maybe explain you how the nuclear energy relaxes, etc. We didn't uh, <clears throat> attempt that. But it explains the salient uh, requirements to initiate LNR. For instance, long initiation time and high loading is, are required due to this model, yeah? Uh, to make this uh, uh, crystalline or quasi-crystalline order uh, where it is possible uh, to, <coughs> to excite LIVs. Uh, then uh, triggering, uh, maybe the, 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 the most mysterious um, requirement in other models, why do we need triggering? Here is the most natural probably, we need triggering to excite LIVs. Uh, without triggering, uh <coughs> it's, it's difficult. And uh, mm, what is that? Maybe the model, of course, with the selected number of material parameters, seems to be the only one that can, in principle, describe quantitatively some observations uh, uh, <coughs> like dependence on the excess energy on the electric current. Yeah? Uh, while other models just give us ideas, this can, in principle, give you <coughs> equation uh, with uh, defined parameters, and then there's a question, a question of whether these parameters are, are good or not, but still. Well, finally, atomistic modeling uh, <coughs> of um, LIVs and other nonlinear phenomena uh, seem to be <coughs> promising uh, field of research, and uh, it, it may order ways of even engineering, maybe, of nuclear active environment if we are successful. Yeah. So far, we made a <coughs> number of publications in different uh, refereed journals, uh, including uh, the highest, probably, FISREF, and uh, also our journal, <coughs> Journal Condensed Nuclear Matter, and such journals as Letters of Materials, and others. At this, let me <coughs> thank you for your attention. 
Just comment is possible. Um, for what I remember, uh, Brian Hirn before at DARPA uh, works a lot about uh, similar models. So which one is the difference between your model and I don't know if you know the, uh, uh, the, the, the well, uh, Brian Hirn work. Okay. The, the idea of uh, Energy localization, as I try to show, is quite old, yeah? Going back to 1950, it says, and yeah? Uh, uh, so, uh, speaking of the, not the, maybe the difference about the novelty, uh, uh, the novelty is that uh, here we uh, try to construct the bridge from this classical behavior of these uh, nonlinear oscillations to the quantum mechanical laws, something like uh, enhanced uh, probability to penetrate through the Coulomb barrier. That's it. Because as we heard uh, today, some do not believe in uh, <coughs> penetration through the Coulomb barrier. But here we, uh, we see that in, in principle, it's possible without introdu introdu introducing uh, completely new physics, because this, all the physics here is more or less known, yeah? But we collect it in such a way that it gives us a hope that even based on the uh, conventional physics, uh, it's possible to understand how we can penetrate uh, through the Coulomb barrier, which appears not to be that huge as is currently believed. Maybe that is the, the, the most important thing. And another is that we are, um, we, 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 we try to model uh, these phenomena uh, <coughs> in many systems now, in, the, in different systems uh, which are relevant for LNR, in PDR, H, PDD, nickel, H, uh, and others, uh, and other materials we, which we are now trying to synthesize. That's it. Um, in my Copenhagen lecture, I, I talked about a guy called Norris Peary, who for the last quarter of a century has been developing a technique using palladium. He gets palladium wire, electrolytically loads it uh, until it's got a very high loading ratio. And then he puts it in um, a glow discharge reactor with a microwave stimulation, 20 nanoseconds on, 100 nanoseconds off. Uh, in his last 20 years of experience, he says the reaction which produces nearly every element in the, in the periodic table, he says it only happens in the liquid phase. How does this work with that? Uh, yeah, it's a good question. Uh, and uh, But uh, probably uh, before I encountered uh, at the work of Avchinikov, here it is, yeah? Ah, sorry, thank you. Oh, long way to go. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I, w I would like to be at the beginning. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Yeah, <coughs> uh, I, I was thinking how to how is possible to to. to uh, understand the phenomena in, in the liquid, in liquid, uh, um, using the Brazier concept, yeah. But uh, here we can see that two already is enough. So in principle, and uh, actually there's experiments uh, done, um, guided by Chinga, etc., when they they saw indication of this uh, behavior in molecular spectrums. So in principle, in liquids, we also can expect, even due to the explosion, etc. Because for us, it's in an instant. For nature, it's a many, many of cycles. Yeah? And as I try to show you, the 10 cycles may be enough. But it's very, very important that these 10 cycles should be time periodic. And that's, that's why uh, I'm a bit sp skeptical about the phonon language. Also, I uh, <coughs> appreciate the, for instance, Peter's approach as such, uh, lattice nuclear coupling. But it seems to me that the coupling uh, probably is more efficient due to these persistent um, time periodic vibrations that the, uh, the um, phonons uh, free gas, let's say, okay? Um, probably I missed something, but <coughs> my simple question is the following. 
I understood that uh, the condition for having this uh, uh, anharmonic effect that produce high energy particles into the lattice is the, uh, this complex uh, uh, oscillating uh, system that is <coughs> uh, created by the lattice itself. Yes. So, but uh, uh, as soon as the particles uh, is uh, uh, going uh, above few electron volts of energy, how the uh, chemical bonds can survive into the lattice in order to maintain this oscillator working? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's a very good question because uh, when you think in terms of temperature, for instance, yeah, one EV is already 11,000 of K, mm. and it seems to be impossible. Yes, it's impossible to heat the whole crystal to this temperature, any crystal will be disintegrated. But here, the uh, molecular dynamics shows you directly when we, uh, for instance, did that, uh, yeah, if we press what started to the movement. Uh, uh, actually, we analyzed the, all the energy, and we just see that here, the energy of, of these guys is, 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 is about to EV. And still, the lattice is OK, just because it's really localized. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Definitely, we cannot go to 10 EV, or uh, not to, to speak of 100, but a few EV we can do. And more than that, when, 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 you, when you go to the, um, to the last one, to the small cluster, for instance, also it shows you that it's more or less uh, realistic, uh, because uh, when, yeah, here, when we did like that, uh, we give uh, each atoms, um, if I remember correctly, one and a half EV. Yeah? So together, we gave to the cluster the energy which is lower than the cohesive energy. And that's why it's, it's very great. Uh, without, but in this case, we, give, we gave them two each. Together four. Cohesive energy is three. And already you see that for some period it was okay, but then it disintegrated. But it, it shows you that we are more or less on the ground yeah, in the chemistry. In fact, I had two short questions. Uh, the first one, you count in the zero point amplitude as 0 0.1 angstrom. This is the same as the Doppler frequency of the hydrogen. Is this the thermic background, zero point? Yes, 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 okay. exactly. The cell frequency, it's usually okay. mm, because it's a curvature of the potential. The second is, if you combine your theory with Schwinger theory, you say you get a reaction rate of 10 minus 6. But with this, we should see explosions. It's, 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 it uh, seems to be a little bit high for me. Uh, the probability for reaction is 10 minus uh, 6. Mm, uh, let, me, let me go to, the, to this dependent then. Yeah. Yeah. Of course, this is too low. This m might be seems too high, but you know, in the in the fusion rate in the particular hot spot. But now the big question: is how many how how many of these spots spots? And then the most crucial question. And actually, we show that when you excite them thermally, the concentration is negligible, something like 10 to minus 19 per uh, per pelletis side. That's why we need some special environment. Well, according to the, to, to 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 this concept, at least, yeah, where which could be enriched, you know, in these special spots. And these are rare. That's why we're surviving without, you know, being <laughs> exploded. <laughs> and we are looking how to, to, to do that. Thank you. Thank you.